Back in middle school or from year 7 to year 9, you were taught that compounds cannot be separated. Only mixtures can be separated. Well, that is wrong. Compounds can be separated, and one of the processes that you can use to separate compound is electrolysis. So electrolysis is done to separate compounds, and more specifically, ionic compounds. Okay? And electrolysis basically means splitting by electricity, using electricity to split these compounds. And strictly, these compounds must be in molten liquid or aqueous solution. Why? Because if we have these ions in molten liquid or in aqueous solutions, these ions are allowed to move within the liquid or solution. And just like electrons in a wire, moving charge will result in a way in which you can carry electricity. Okay? And the main apparatus used for electrolysis include, first of all, the electricity source, the source of the electrons, and the electrons are responsible for electrolysis taking place. And we also have a light bulb in order to test whether your solution conducts electricity. So if your solution conducts electricity, the circuit is closed, and the light bulb, which is connected in series into your circuit, will light up, showing that your, your solution, or liquid, can conduct electricity. That is imperative for electricity taking place. So, oh, and I forgot to mention, the ionic compounds cannot be in solid form because in a solid form, the ions cannot move. So therefore, they cannot conduct electricity for electricity, uh, electrolysis to take place. So in the apparatus, you will also have graphite electrodes, two of them, known as the graphite anode and the cathode. In electrolysis, uh, or in IGCSE chemistry, you will learn two cases where you will use electrodes. First of all is electrolysis, and after that is voltaic cells, which you will learn about later. In electrolysis, strictly, the electrodes that are connected to the positive terminals are known as the anode, and the electrode that is connected to the negative terminal is known as the cathode. Okay? And you attach these two um, these two electrodes to your circuit and you dip it in a solution of your ionic compound or liquid uh, molten ionic compound and the liquid or the solution is known as the electrolyte or in other words uh, the liquid that can conduct electricity and in this case since the negative terminal is on the right and the positive terminal is on the left electron will flow in the clockwise direction and I've also labeled the dotted ovals as the region where electrolysis will take place. And that is where there is an interface between the interface uh, between the liquid or solution and the electrodes. So where those two contact is where electrolysis will take place. Looking at the cathode, the cathode is also known as our source of electrons. It is where the electrons from the power source will first reach, okay? So since it is negatively charged, since it is uh, attached to the negative terminal, positive ions in your solution or liquid will be attracted to the cathode. And the positive ions will discharge. They will gain electrons. Since the cathode is the source of electrons, the positive ions in the solution or liquid will gain the electrons. Okay, And they will therefore be reduced. And an equation that we can use to describe this process is Mn+, plus, which is essentially our positive metal ion in liquid state, gaining a certain number of electrons in order to attain a neutral state. So if our positive ion has a charge of N+, plus, it will gain N number of electrons in order to form a neutral atom of M, usually in a solid form. Similarly, in a aqueous solution, we have positive metal or positive ions as Mn+, plus, and they will also gain, it's basically the same thing, but our ions are in two different states, that is aqueous uh, instead of liquid, okay? And in the anode, on the anode, sorry, the negative ions will be attracted to the anode. Why? Because the anode is positively charged. It's deficient of electrons, so it needs electrons. So your negative ions will give up its electrons. And if we denote our negative ions as A and minus, because A would be the species and N minus would be the charge. So our negative ions will have a charge of N minus. It will lose a certain number of electrons in order to form 
the species at a neutral state. Okay, so if our negative ions has a negative charge of n minus, it will lose n number of electrons in order to form the neutral state of A. All right. Similarly for the aqueous um, uh, situation. So for electrolysis of a molten liquid, a, a common example that we can use is molten lead bromide. And in molten liquids, there are only usually two, two species that will be involved. First of all is a positive metal ion and the negative non-metal ion. And the positive metal ion, since it's positive, will be attracted to the negative terminal, which is the cathode. And the negative non-metal ion, in this case bromine minus, will be attracted to the anode. Why? Because it's positive. Negative attracts to positive. So if we were to look at the situation, how it interacts with the electrodes, we can see uh, in the solution it will be represented as so. Again, the cathode is our source of electrons. It is a negative terminal. And so at the cathode, the positive ions will gain electrons. So our positive ion, in our example, is lead 2 plus, And it will gain two electrons in order to form lead atom. So the neutral lead atom. So at the cathode, lead metal is formed. At the anode now, the ne negative ions will lose electrons to the anode in order to form the neutral species. So in, in our case, mm, the bromine negative ions will lose a sufficient number of electrons to form bromine atoms. However, in the real world, bromine exists as a diatomic molecule of Br2. So therefore, we must require two bromine ions to lose two electrons in order to form two bromine atoms which will combine to form our diatomic bromine molecule. So at uh, the anode, bromine gas will be formed. So if we were to look at the situation overall, what's happening over time. So over time, lead metal is forming at the cathode. So it can either deposit onto the cathode like so or at the operating temperatures that we're working at in order to melt our, um, our molten liquid. Uh, molten, yeah, to, to obtain the molten liquid. Uh, this deposit will actually melt into form molten lead, which will deposit as almost like a sludge underneath uh, the cathode. On the anode, bromine gas is formed, so therefore there will be bubbling taking place at the anode, and a brown gas will be evolved. So that's the first part of the electrolysis series, and the next the next video will be on electrolysis of an aqueous solution. So see you then and good luck with your revision.